Welcome to another edition of ESI Africa Insights. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking to Babatunde Osadare, who is the Chief Legal Officer for Ikeja Electric PLC, which is the largest electricity distribution company in Nigeria. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, just to start off, can you tell us how Ikeja Electric is using the new electricity regulations in Nigeria to provide a better customer experience for your for your client base? Okay, I would say that, um, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in Nigeria at the moment and over the last few years in terms of um, changing regulation, changing law, and the sort of direction that um, the country wants to move towards um, in trying to provide electricity for the people. And so two years ago, you know, we had a constitutional amendment um, to also try to devolve the ability for the constituent states to actively participate um, both in the regulation as well as project development for power um, in Nigeria. And so following that constitutional amendment that also allows the states to participate actively, we've also then had a change in the law itself, the Electricity Act 2023, um, repealing the 2005 law that we had. And now the major um, contribution um, of, of this new law is to sort of make it a one-stop center, one-stop law for all of the agencies and uh, that are responsible for playing um, any role, all the roles are, are at all within the sector, at least to have one general central legislation that specifies or creates them and, and specifies their power and role as well. And also very critically, following that constitutional amendment uh, to also allow the states uh, to take up regulatory oversight of um, distribution activities, um, generation, uh, transmission within their state boundaries. And so since the creation of that law, um, some of the state governments within the country have created state laws um, to determine how they want to play within the sector, um, how they would regulate or issue licenses to new investors who want to come within the state either for transmission or generation or even distribution um, sector. Uh, for existing distribution within the country or within the states, the states now have regulatory oversight. So NAC, we used to have regulatory oversight, um, is expected upon the application of the creation of a law and application by a state to hand over regulatory oversight um, to the state's now regulator uh, following the setting up of their own regulatory institution. So a lot, a lot has been happening over the last 18, um, 18 months um, in that regard. And so if you take Ikeja Electric, for example, we are predominantly based in Lagos State. So there's a new Lagos State law. Um, the regulatory body has been established for Lagos State. They've been inaugurated. And of course, steps have been taken following the issuance of the direction um, or the transition order by NERC to the states. A lot of work is being done um, to actually start the direct um, regulation of activities within the state. So um, if you ask about what Ikeja Electric has actively been doing, knowing that there's been a lot of moving parts, ultimately is electricity. How do you uh, contract for power and how do you deliver that power effectively um, to, to, to your customers? is to ensure that um, where they are, they are unserved customers, where they are underserved customers or locations, um, you want to make sure that you are able to deliver power. Now, as you know, distribution companies do not generate. They take power from the grid and then they distribute um, in, within the network. Now, rather than wait traditionally uh, to take power from the grid where the power is there and then distribute, um, the, the company is now actively and has been doing so over the last years, considering the changing landscape in law and policy, um, to look for developers that it can work with to do embedded generation, distributed 
um, generation, um, targeted at centers where the um, power is not is not as good. Mm. Um, apart from trying to do embedded generation, mm. I'm also looking at um, partnering with mini grids uh, developer using renewable energy sources. Um, and we recently had a launching of a, a five five hundred kilowatts interconnected mini grid about a few months ago, and we're looking at commissioning another one um, by the end of, of, of this month. Um, so those are some of the examples in trying to ensure that you can provide end-to-end -end energy services to your customers. Um, and there's nothing that says you shouldn't because ultimately the customers want the power. What do you do to deliver the energy? If grid energy is there, you take it. If it's not, or the infrastructure to take the power is not uh, robust enough. Then you can look at local solution and uh, targeted at customers in those particular location um, to serve them. Um, you will typically have concerns around um, affordability. Yes. And you can the customers afford the power depending on the nature of um, the, the, the source of the energy, whether it is gas, whatever the source is. Mm. Now, if you look at all the costs, from generation costs, the cost of the fuel, which is gas, the um, strengthening of the distribution network that needs to happen, and all the attendant distribution costs. Um, are the customers able to afford it? Yes. Um, in some areas, yes. In some locations, no. Uh, so it's a delicate balance to strike. Um, sometimes you want to partner with an investor who also wants to bring in capital. Mm. Now, depending on the nature of that kind of funding, uh, how long are they willing to wait for yes. to be able to recover their investment? Mm. Um, energy investment is usually very capital intensive. Yeah. And it takes a long lead time for you to um, finish the project and then mm. wait for it to, um, uh, to be commissioned mm. and then maybe you recover your investment afterwards. So there are so many you know, complex parts that you have to try to strike a balance. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things we've been doing. Yeah. So, you know, just in terms of smart meters and the role of, uh, you know, there are, where does smart meters fit into this conversation? Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of, of, of mm. EKG's rollout. Yeah. So I think for us, I would say that we, um, we've been very fortunate. Um, because of the sort of leadership um, that we have had in the Kedja election. Um, because since the day of uh, privatization, which happened in Nigeria at the end of 2013, um, one of the very fundamental decisions that was made at that time is to ensure that um, we came to you know, a very broad digital transformation roadmap. Yes. And part of um, that roadmap is to ensure we then start to invest into smart metering. And so since that time and, and now, all the meters we have installed and are still installing have been smart meters. Um, part of what we also did was to try and put into buckets the metering strategy. Um, yes, you inherited the large customer population who were not metered. Mm. Uh, you also inherited a very um, large amount of assets, um, distribution assets, whether it's in the, the feeder lines or the distribution transformers that were also not metered. And so it was very important that from the very beginning, you, as part of your digital transformation roadmap, make a decision on how you want to um, meter your network, as well as your customers. So from the very beginning, we took a decision to then start to install smart meters on the grid assets so that all your feeders uh, have smart meters, your distribution transformers, they are all smartly metered. And then the customers um, also have smart meters um, prepared. Um, and over, over the years, that's, that's been our focus to ensure that we're able to, as quickly as possible, close out and the metering gap for customers who are yet to be metered. And after that, we now start to replace um, the meters that have become obsolete yeah. by reason of usage, using of use by time, mm. or those that are no longer uh, efficient in, in, in the tracking of energy 
consumption. And I would say that the government has also played a very um, significant role in the type and you know, the volume of meters that we have installed um, over the over the last seven, seven, eight mm -hmm. years. Um, there's been various metering program um, from the meter asset provider scheme uh, introduced by the regulator. We then moved to a national mass metering program. Um, we have the World Bank distribution expansion uh, metering program that, that we are currently um, implementing. Procurement has been completed. You have the meter acquisition fund yes. also introduced by the regulator trying to ensure that customers who are not metered classified as band A customers now paying cost reflective tariff um, are fully metered. Um, a lot of work has been done in that regard to try and close out customers in that category. And then of course you have the presidential metering initiative that is also ongoing. So I would say for us in Ikeja Electric over the last uh, five, six years, we've installed uh, over 600,000 smart meters and it's ongoing. And as you yes. know, you know, the, the metering gap, uh, it's it just, it's, it, it, um, how do you put it? Um, the numbers, you know, keeps changing. Yes. Because as you are metering, you see how oh, the numbers are changing or you need to separate a household or where you used to have one meter, there's been a redevelopment, so you yeah. need more meters there. So that's what you see on a going basis. And we're doing our best to, to keep yeah. going. And, and given all these challenges, and as you pointed out, in an ever-evolving um, energy and electricity landscape in Nigeria, how are the discos um, working together to kind of, um, you know, overcome common common challenges? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm smiling because you know, in distribution um, subsector, not only in Nigeria, uh, and I think if you if you check notes um, with utilities around Africa, um, the challenges are usually very similar. Uh, whether it's in the policy side or whether it's a regulation around um, how, how you engage uh, with your customers. And of course, you know, as utilities, it's a heavily regulated um, sex subsector. And so if you touch base with utilities, whether it's in, in Kenya or Ghana, oh, it, the issues are usually very uh, similar. And it's the same in mm. Nigeria as well, where yeah. um, at the point of privatization, uh, you had about 11 distribution companies. And so it's very important that from time to time, uh, you're able to compare notes, find out what the issues are uh, within your network, the solutions you've deployed yes. uh, to try and tackle those problems, um, whether it's in relation to IT issues, uh, whether it's in relation to uh, commercial losses, um, energy theft, um, technical losses, how are you managing those? So I, I think it's been one, one um, thing that we've done very well over the last decade um, to work together as distribution companies, um, even under the Umbrella Association, because there's the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distribution um, Company. So under that umbrella as well, which, which, which is a very uh, good platform um, to come together, uh, share ideas, share notes on how these unique challenges are, are being resolved uh, so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So uh, if you take energy theft, for example, um, in Ikeja Electric, we have a very robust vigilance and monitoring system and solution that we've deployed. So a sister disco can then come in to say, oh, how are you tackling this sort of problem? And we're happy to share notes with them, uh, to share solution with them, uh, so that they can also have a good head start um, in, in how they deploy this sort of solution and also help because it's a value chain whether from generation, transmission, distribution. And everything that happens affects every value chain player. A lot of times you can say, oh, I work in the distribution subsector. But the performance in that subsector affects what happens. Efficiency in generation, in transmission. Um, if your losses are huge, you're not able to control them. It also affects your ability you know, to, to pay up your obligations to the market because you as a last chain uh, to the customer, your efficiency impacts everything that happens upstream 
ability to collect, ability to pay your bills. Um, that, that collection helps in servicing what happens within the trans transmission or the generation, even the gas supplier, because it's all one value yes. chain. And so um, working together collaboratively has uh, is, is been very helpful, um, like I mentioned earlier. And I think that's the way to go. Um, even as we move into the next phase of um, you know, unlocking power solutions for Nigeria and the state government also you know, coming, coming on, onto the stage at this time. Um, there, there's, there's no other way to go than to continue to work and engage collaboratively. That's what I would say. <laughs> Baba Tunde, thank you so much for your time and your insights into the Nigerian electricity sector. Thank you for joining us on ESI Africa Insights and have a powerful day.